what's up dudes uh i figured i'd make a video tonight i sound like hell i know um and the reason i'm making it tonight is i don't know if i'll have a voice tomorrow um <laughs> battling some kind of upper chest cold here um, so made the post yesterday that found out some pretty cool news um so i figured try to make a video about it because it's it is it's pretty cool um so as most of you know i've been doing this a long time um always funded it on my own um had some help from uh some friends uh family uh friends friends like the guys at big kid racing them guys have been huge mentors over the years uh huge help um uh, parts, installs, what have you. Um, as far as family, you know, my dad, he owns a bar, Knucklehead Saloon in Huron, Ohio. Um, they've sponsored me a couple times throughout the years. Um, most recent time, uh, years would be uh, American Race Cars. Travis and Shelly and them guys over there. Just freaking massive help to me. Um, and it's, I've never asked, you know, I've, I've never put myself out there for sponsorship ever. Um, never felt like I earned, or, you know, deserved it or earned it or whatever. Um, <coughs> but there's going to be a lot of coughing in here too, by the way. You're just going to have to deal with it, okay? I feel like ass. So, um, but I, I've never put myself out for sponsorship. I've never felt like I raced enough, you know, to have an, an actual sponsorship. Um, you know, this year... Um, kind of had a little goal in mind uh, as far as running with the index guys at 42 you know I most of you know I ran with the Renegade Racing Association for a couple years um, big supporter of them I built my car around that series actually um, so when that series re, um, I guess you could say retired or temporary retired I like I'd hope to believe it's temporary because my god I'd, I'd be back there in my skivvies in the morning told me that there was going to be a renegade race so uh, just a great series and it opened my eyes to a, a another way of racing um, the poor man's heads up racing is what i call it in, in other words index racing so um 42 kind of took over the index series um they've been doing a great job with it i was never able to hop into it the last couple years this year i uh, was hoping to do it um and then wife encouraged me to join the points for index so I did knowing um, financially that's it's a lot you know I mean owning a race car financially sucks it's not, it's not smart but uh, it's something that I enjoy and many of us do so I knew joining points was going to be a, a, a financial um, situation if you will um, you got your entries you got your fuel for towing you got your fuel for your race car and then your food expenses and all that stuff. So it's uh, it's not cheap. Um, and you're not in it for the money. You're not there to win the money. You know, you're there for the camaraderie. You're there to you know win some rounds, enjoy yourself. And hey, if you win a race, that's just icing on the cake. You know. So that being said, I got a text message from a good buddy. Uh, I think it was probably about a week week or two weeks ago now. Uh, uh, Corey Sims, family friend. I cannot thank this dude, cannot thank this dude enough for everything he's done um, for myself, for my family. Um, this is the guy that built my brother's engine in one of his trucks, um, and now he is currently building an engine for my dad's car. Um, he's helped my, you know, my sister out with her her daily drivers. You know, he's just a, a good-hearted dude, man. Um, I, I can't be more prouder to have him kind of represent yeah dude racing um he's just he's exactly the kind of person that you know i, I strive to be and then and i think everybody should strive so <coughs> uh he texts me says hey give me a buzz um i think it was something along the lines he's got some questions or something like that so i know he was building a small block forward so i thought all right this is gonna be you know engine questions so so i call him up he says hey man you know, he works for Sharpnap uh, in Willard, Ohio, uh, Chevrolet dealership, um, and they own a couple of Ford dealerships. Uh, they're just 
one of the one of the names you think of when you hear car dealership in this area you think of you know a couple um sharp neck being one of them um so he is a uh mechanic there and uh, a fantastic one might i add and um he got on the on the ball with the manager the one day about how he felt about maybe sponsoring a a home homegrown uh race team kind of thing you know guys trying to do it on their own <coughs> and um the dude was all about it uh the manager blessed it up and down said uh absolutely wasn't even a question and um gave Corey the check uh under yeah dude racing um and bought me 20 gallons of uh 110 renegade fuel for the year amongst some other fuel for a couple of the other guys my mind is freaking blown okay I, I had the phone on speaker when, I, when Corey was talking to me, standing in front of my wife, because I was just in disbelief. Um, I've never, like I said, I've never put myself out there. Um, Corey just told his manager about what I'm about, what I do, what a couple of us do, and then the dude loved it, and he said, yeah, I'm all about it, for sure. I'm, I'll, I will definitely sponsor Gated Racing and, and go kick some ass, you know? Speechless almost. Um, I've been kind of thinking about it over the week. It's crazy to me. Absolutely nuts. Um, but it happened. It's real. It's a sponsorship from Sharp Neck, Sharp Neck Chevrolet, and Willard. Um, I, I, don't, I don't. I gotta see if this guy's gonna let me over for starts. Hey. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, I can't thank them enough. I can't thank Corey enough. Uh, the dude just goes out of his way constantly for for us, uh, like I said, for my family and 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 for any of the other guys in the Dude Racing um, or any of the local car clubs as well. Um, the dude just he's awesome, man. Um, and I really hope that we can make them proud, make them make it known that you know they didn't they didn't waste their money on us um, on me specifically. I kind of feel like I need to. Um, do better I guess um, I've got the car clearly uh, I just I need to I need more seat time and I need to make it happen um, so that's the that's the good um, cool stuff that I want to talk about we're gonna rewind back a little bit to last race had some uh, boost issues as you guys seen I found them I put new uh, fittings on new lines Everything is holding, seems well. So I took the car out yesterday after work, drove it down the road, got into boost a little bit just to see how it acted, and it acted as it should. Um, got on the trans brake, made six pounds right off the rip, which is which is normal. Um, so I believe as far as that goes, we're good. Um, now the, the scary thing I wanna talk about. When I cracked a 308, <coughs> When I cracked that block, um, I was in the semifinals at a Renegade race, and I got beaten semis. I come back to the trailer, and I'm sitting at the trailer letting it idle, kind of cooling down. And I look at the oil pressure, and it was nine pounds idling. So I knew something was wrong. I get it home that same night, and it's now cooled down. That's like a two hour drive from Thompson to here. Fired up, it's got like almost 50 pounds. The minute it got to temp, it goes back down to nine pounds. Stock block problems, okay? That's when I pulled the 308 out, put the 302 in, found out the main webs were cracked. The rest is history. So, I go out yesterday for a spin. Now mind you, I've changed the oil since the race two weekends ago and new filter it's all fresh now the only thing I'm thinking possible is <coughs> that maybe the oil filter jump I don't know I also did some work on the Holly dash too and I had to pull a ground out of the plug 
in order to put the tack conditioner in that you guys seen that I put in as well. So part of me is wondering too if that ground I pull out of the plug has something to do, and this is just me being lazy, I haven't looked at it yet, but maybe it's the ground for the oil pressure sensor, maybe now it's grounding, um, just the sensor itself is grounding to the engine, but I don't know, I'm just pulling random scenarios out there. But, so I get back yesterday, it's sitting here in the garage idling, sitting around 20 pounds idle, which I'm okay with. And then all of a sudden it drops 15. And then I give it a little rev, goes up 20, 25 pounds, sits there, sits there, sits there as it idles back down. And all of a sudden it drops back down to 15. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think anything's wrong. It's not acting that way. Um, but just seeing it act like that on the dash is just bringing back memories, bad ones. So <clears throat> I don't know. It could be a filter. I got um, actually talking to Corey about this just a second ago. Um, maybe the filter I bought um, is a bum filter. Um, it's a Wix. It's a little stubby filter. Yeah, it's got to be stubby. I don't have the 90 degree fitting on here for the FL1, uh, the big mo uh, motorcraft filter. I run a little stubby Wix filter. Um, sits behind the header on the on three. Get pressure. <coughs> that little guy right there. So I, I don't know if. You know, there's a bypass and a filter acting up. Or if it truly is a problem. I don't know. Um it's supposed to race Saturday at Driver 42. I'm going to send it, and we'll see what happens. See how it acts. So, that's the bet. Oh, God. Dinner. Oof. Um, so, the positive, if there is something wrong, here's the positive. <coughs> I got a 351 block. It's ready. I got an intake for it. I got rods, pistons. Um, I got crank. Now, I wanted to put main studs in this thing. That's what I wanted to do. If that happens, I have to have it line honed, which is a whole other animal. If something happens to this 302, say Saturday, um, that's not going to happen. It's not going to get line honed. It's not going to get main studs. It's going to get the factory two bolt main shit put in it. And we're going to run it. I'm going to put my heads on it. I'm going to put my cam in it. That intake. <coughs> the uh, crossover pipe. The crossover pipe on the hot side will have to be lengthened. I think like two or three inches I read. The only other concern I have. Everything else I'm cool with. That crossover is not a huge deal. It's just widening it. Um, my only other concern is my downpipe. Obviously everything's going to shift a little bit. About an inch and a half I believe this way. You, you know either way. It's going to be close. Um, that's my only other concern. I got quite a bit of room there. I got probably close, eh, two inches tight there. But that'd be it. Outside of that, it'd be a simple swap. Yank this thing out. Gaskets. I mean, it wouldn't be nothing. Honestly, couldn't do it in a weekend. Get someone to put the bottom end together. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing when that happens. Um, I guess I could try it for once. I don't know. Fuck around and find out, I guess. Um, but that'd be it. Um, rings, I'd have to get rings. I don't know if I got rings. I don't think I had rings. I don't remember where that came from. Rings might be the only thing I don't have. But, worst case, I could drop it off somewhere too and just have the bottom end assembled. And then I could just slap my shit in there. Um, and be done with it. So, but we'll see. Weather's not looking fantastic by any means. Um, definitely rain tomorrow. And in my opinion, if it rains as much as they say it's going to rain, I don't think Drago 42 has any, uh, any option but to call it. You're not going to want anybody in the pits my full opinion on that but i don't know they could they could tell me i'm retarded and say hey come race and if that's the case i'll be there um but we'll see we're playing it by ear um but this is why i was driving this is i just got back from Corey's. there it is guys 20 gallons of the good stuff and it, this is <laughs> Even just looking at it, like, it's just, I don't know. I, to me, it's this is crazy. Like, I don't feel like I deserve that. It's so awesome. Uh, just got some good people, really, really good people surrounding me this year. And uh, I, I want to make them proud. And I hope I can. So, I believe I can. Um, <coughs> we'll see. So, that's it, guys. I'll probably wait to post this till tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to make the video tonight because, like I said, I don't think I'll have a voice in the morning. Or feel like doing it. So, 
Um, the car is ready. Um, I will keep you guys posted uh, when I know. You will know um, if we are racing tomorrow or Saturday. Jesus, Saturday. Um, I'll be sure to tell you guys. And I, I strongly encourage you guys to come down to Drago 42. It's a kick-ass experience. Super cool layout, super cool track. And they just, they move cars, I think, just as good as, if not better than anybody in the area. Um, and that's a that's a big thing for me. Um, you know, not a lot of downtime. So, it's nice. Um, and if you guys do come out, please tell me. Please let me know. Text me. And, I, and I'm a super busy guy when I'm at the, at the track and the trailer, especially if this thing's acting up. My mind's here. Um, but I do, I try to socialize and, and, and bullshit. And, and to me, those are the best times. Those are the best memories is, uh, meet new people, um, that have the same, um, drive that, you know, that you do. So <coughs> if you guys come out, let me know if I don't answer my phone and you know, I'm there, just drive around. You'll see this bright orange pumpkin. You can't miss it. So, um, that's it guys. That's all I got. I'm going to go in, get some rest, um, unload this fuel. Sharpneck, Willard, Corey Sims. Uh, thank you, guys. It's huge. Um, I, I can't say it enough. I mean, American Race Cars, uh, Sharpneck, Corey Sims, yeah, dude, racing. Let's put this bitch in the winter circle, dude. Let's do it. You guys have a good weekend.